Yeah, all right, thank you. OK, good afternoon, everybody. Hope you're well. Oh, good morning. Yeah, some people joining us uh, from a different time zones. Good morning, Tony. Hope you're well. Um, I'm probably going to get going um, because we have quite a lot of slides. I want to take you through quite a bit of information. Uh, and we've only got an hour book, so um, I guess people who are coming a little bit late will have to just join us. Um, I'm going to go through a little bit of housekeeping to start with. Um, so just so you know, and anybody that joins late, a copy of this presentation will be sent out towards the end of the week. We've got another session on Thursday, so it'll be after that, likely later Thursday or probably Friday. So that's good. And we're also going to record this session, and this session will be available on YouTube as well. Again, post on our channels. We'll we'll send out the link when we send out the uh, all of the materials. Um, I know some of you have asked about the details around the IMB, so there is a slide in this later. But just for your records, that's on the fifth and sixth of July in the Berlin Convention Center. Again, we'll repeat that in the email when that comes out. You'll see on the last page of the presentation when I get to it, there's all of our contact details as well. And I please, please urge you, this is a totally genuine request. Please feel free to email us, call us, WhatsApp, whatever you want. We really generally want to have a, a two-way street and a two-way conversation with all of our colleagues and friends in the press and media between now and the show. So that's a genuine and open invitation. Please, please get in touch. Uh, if you're not talking, can you please go on mute? Thank you. Um, great, so I'm going to talk for about um, three quarters of an hour and then hopefully we'll have some time, a bit of time left for Q&As. You can, of course, use the chat function and towards the end, when I've stopped talking, we'll go through all of the questions uh, in, that have been um, logged in the chat function. OK. Great, so everybody is well. I know that some of you know me, some of you know me not so well or at all. So I'm going to do a little bit of introduction. Uh, then I'm going to talk about um, the strength of EFA, you know, what we have got and what we all know and recognize is fantastic about the show. And then talk about some signposts about how EFA is evolving, both for 2023 and then also in the future. Um, and then hopefully we will have a little bit of time for question and answers. Great. So um, who is Oliver Merlin? Uh, as I said, some of you I know you quite well, but some of you I haven't met. So... Um, welcome to this series of briefings. We did one initially with some of our friends uh, in the German press uh, about a couple of months ago, and we aim to repeat these um, sessions going forward. And as I said, very happy for everybody to reach out to me directly or to members of the team. So my background is as a management consultant. When I left university, I was with Accenture for five years and learned the basics of, uh, you know, kind of business, looking at businesses, analyzing etc. And then about 12 years or so, um, I had the fortune, uh, the happy uh, fortune to join the events industry, where I've been very happy ever since. Uh, and I've worked for most of the major organizers, both in London and also internationally, including Hive, ITE, and obviously now uh, Clarion. Uh, and Clarion is who I'm now working for, uh, and Clarion have set up a joint venture called EFA Management GmbH, which is a joint venture between Clarion, the organizer, who are based here in London, where I am today, uh, and the GFU, which is the Consumer Electronics Association in Germany. And I am the MD or Geschäftsführer of EFA Management GmbH. And we have the responsibility and indeed the joy of organizing and operating EFA Berlin for the foreseeable future. The show stays at Messe Berlin, um, and, but we have taken on the role of um, organizing 
uh, the show. So that is me in a nutshell. I'm going to spend about probably 10 minutes or so now talking about Aoife. Um, will be this will be familiar to you most of what I'm saying, and it's about what we perceive to be as Aoife as the best trade show in the world for consumer electronics and home appliances. I hope uh, that you share that view. I use the word trade show quite specifically there. Um, there are obviously other conferences uh, and events in, in the space, but in terms of a trade show, I think generally that EFA um, is the best, and I hope, hope you will uh, share that opinion. What does that mean, though, in terms of the competitive landscape? Well, I've been to all of these shows this year, and uh, this isn't a, uh, an opportunity for me to sort of criticise the competition, if you like. Um, we are one ecosystem. There's there's more than uh, enough room in that ecosystem for all of us to happily coexist. And indeed, I know most of the people that run these shows and they're fantastic events, each with their own strengths and weaknesses, though. And this is where I really see there is an opportunity for EFA, and uh, I would be interested to hear your opinions on this. Um, we went to CES, obviously, in Las Vegas. Tremendous show. Really got their eye on... Um, the innovation landscape, and obviously they made a big bet this year of uh, looking at how consumer electronics was playing with the car and automobile industry. Um, but then I guess due to Las Vegas being how it is, you kind of lose people a little bit, and that sense of belonging at festival really wasn't there. And, and if I'm being honest, I think that EFA still remains a better trade show than um, CES. Um, South by Southwest is is you know on the opposite end of the scale, where obviously anybody who's had the 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 opportunity to go to South by Southwest is a fantastic festival in Austin. Maybe not quite so good on the trade show uh, aspect. Um, and then Mobile World Congress is the other end of the spectrum completely. Uh, a really, really fantastic trade show, but perhaps lacking a little bit on the festival side of things and, and maybe not quite so hot on the content. Both CES and Mobile World Congress have fantastic uh, innovation and startup zones. And I'm going to talk quite a lot about this later on in my presentation. And indeed, this is an area where I think we um, need and we will, and you'll see a lot of investment and effort spent on EFA's innovation startup zone, which is called EFA Next over the coming years. Uh, a quick um, snapshot or view, if you like, I'm sharing with you sort of now relatively privileged information, but it's public domain you can, you can use and talk. This is where we are at the moment. So obviously we're still in the sales cycle. Um, and I'm quite happy with these figures as at the moment we have out of our business, 78% 70, is retained business and 22% is new business. The new business obviously is growing all the time, as is some of the retained. We still have retained clients coming in and that figure is actually now at about 24%. And by September, by the time the show opens, that ratio we anticipate to be around the 70-30 mark. Uh, and I like that those those uh, ratios for a number of reasons. You obviously, with a show of the size and scale of EFA, you want to have a certain amount of familiarity and people coming to the show who've been coming to it for a number of years and our customers and our B2B visitors and our consumers obviously want to know um, a, a lot of things that they come to see. On the other hand, you certainly need to provide a lot of newness to show that the show uh, is on top of innovations and new trends and new customers that are appearing. And so I think 70 30 is about the right uh, is about the right split. Um, in terms of where we are in our scale, uh, it's probably worth me also saying that um, the show now is already bigger than it would be than it was in 2022, both in terms of volume of square meterage and volume of customers. And we're on a healthy we've got a healthy pipeline growing so that we are actually targeting the size and scale of 2019, and that's within our uh, targets, and we're on track for that. Uh, and quite an interesting slide on geography split here. Um, again, obviously, we, we haven't finished, so this will change a little bit um, over a period of time. Again, I think this is relatively healthy. As you might imagine, uh, Germany and China are the um, two leading territories from which we attract customers. Um, and I think if we were doing this for new business only, Germany and China would be much further down the list. Uh, EFA has obviously got a long history of attracting customers from those markets, and those are two very, very strong markets. Um, but in terms of new business, we're attracting lots of clients from the US, from the UK, from Italy, France, and, and other places, which is great and fantastic. And I think this is already quite a, a healthy uh, spread in terms of our geography, 
and we are certainly making um, as much as many efforts as we can to make sure that there is a um, a big uh, a big geographical spread. Here is a current view of the terrain plan. So again, this is uh, you know this is uh, you know uh, evolving all the time, and we will make sure we have the very latest one when we come to send you out the deck at the end of this week. But here you'll see some um, elements of ether that you know and love, um, and that are in the usual places, uh, along with some of the um, new uh, activations, experience, and new um, exhibition. Uh, segments as well. So then let's spend a bit of time now. That was kind of, you know, what we have and what you, I think you know and, and love about EFA. We'll spend a little bit of time now talking about how does EFA, EFA evolve? And I was very much at pains to say uh, previously, and I will reiterate this now, that EFA is so big. And I think that one of the roles of EFA is, is to be really a guide to both our B2B visitors and our B2C visitors. And we work closely with our customers so that we um, look at new trends and new innovations in a very considered way. OK, so I talk a lot about evolution, not revolution. That's not to say that you won't see new things this year, if you for sure will. And I'm going to spend this time now um, talking about some of those new things that you'll see. So a lot of the. Um, uh, improvements and investments that we have made, that Clarion have made initially, are in the marketing sphere. So um, a lot of uh, our objectives, if you like, and priorities is to increase the quality and the quantity of trade visitors, B2B, but also to massively increase the quantity of B2C visitors. And you'll see that reflected in sort of the, some of the content programs we're now putting on and some of the other experiences that people can have when they come to EFA. Clearly, uh, a key part of getting to that destination or accomplishing our, our objectives, if you like, is a big investment in data. So we now have well over 100,000 uh, B2B trade contacts across you know, many of the countries of the world, over 140, 142 countries. Uh, we have over 1,500 press and media contacts, which obviously includes all of your cells. And also a crucial point here is when we talk and uh, we look at media, we take a very uh, holistic view. So all of what you might describe as traditional press and media and also online new media and influencers as well. Obviously, to keep the um, pipeline of customers growing and make sure we always have new and interesting exhibitors, we've got nearly 11,000 um, records in our exhibitor uh, database. And that also crucially includes a lot of smaller exhibitors and startups and scale ups. So then a couple of slides about our campaigns. So the idea behind our campaigns is that we effectively segment and we target messages to particular audiences. So be they uh, trade visitors, be they consumers who are coming, be they exhibitors or potential sponsors and people for different parts of the show like EFA Next or VIPs and so on. Uh, within each of those segments or groups, you then have got to factor in different demographics um, and um, occupations, um, lifestyle choices, etc. So we, you will see, and hopefully you're already starting to see, lots of campaigns around Gen Z, women in tech, engineers, scientists, technologists, whatever it might be, whatever sort of sub audience group we can think of, we try to target the messages uh, as much as possible so people can get the most out of their interaction with EFA, both on the marketing front and also on the product front. So far, so good. Our campaigns have had a very good reaction. If any of you are kind of uh, experts on um, marketing statistics, you know that these figures are pretty high. When we send out campaigns, email campaigns, the average open rate is around 41%. So normally you'd expect to see about half that or less. Uh, CTOR stands for click to open rate. And again, that is normally way down around the two or three percent. So we're very happy with the performance of all of our campaigns at the moment. So we're happy with our messaging internally. But clearly, uh, this also points to the fact of a pretty engaged audience and um, the number of people, you know, a, a large number of people 
around the world, not just in Germany uh, and in the um, EU, who want to engage and hear about the EFA story, um, be that familiar things or to understand what we're doing uh, and changing is new. We had one email which uh, had an open rate of 59% and a click through rate of 23%, which is kind of almost unheard of. So we're, we're, we're pretty we're pretty happy and, and pretty pleased with um, the levels of engagement with our audience group so far. and hoping that continues. Um, this registration is live. So if you haven't got your ticket for EFA now, please click on the following link. Uh, and again, we'll put this link in the email and make sure you can click on there. Please have a good look around. This is open much earlier than possible, and, and uh, we've already sold quite a lot of tickets, which is fantastic. Um, and you will again see campaigns or, or um, media placements trying to get people to register uh, for those different groupings and, and uh, audience groups that I mentioned earlier. Uh, and look out for um, days where there will be um, interesting work on prices or group bookings and things like that. So again, please help us get this message out that the registration is live and help please help us uh, to drive traffic to this site would be uh, um, very, very much appreciated. There's also a new website, so if you haven't had a chance, please again, we'll put the link in the uh, in the email. Please have a good look around the website. There's a lot of new stuff on there. Uh, initially, obviously, we had to take the website from the Messe Berlin, who were, who were running it, and put it on our on our domain. And we're gradually, the team is working very hard to put lots more new content on there. If you see along the top there, in terms of the tabs, there's one called Content and Media Hub. There's lots of interesting um, facts and figures, articles in there. Feel free to look and use any of that um, content. Um, that you want to in there. It's all for public distribution. So hope you'll find lots of useful material in there. But yeah, please visit the new website. We will include the link as part of our comms. I'm really impressed. I'm sure I don't need to say much about this slide. We are delighted that so many of you will hopefully come to the show and we just want to continue working with as many of you as possible. I can't stress enough uh, the fact that we want to have really, really open and meaningful conversations with many people um, uh, in the press and media community as absolutely possible. Now, uh, clearly a very important um, part of our ecosystem is the retailer and buying groups, especially if we're claiming to be the uh, absolutely best number one trading platform uh, trade show uh, in the world. And obviously the, the key uh, mechanism for that, if you like, are retailing buying groups. All of these people here I've personally been to see or in the process of seeing or having online meetings with, um, and they are a key conduit for us for really to understand what's going on in the consumer space. They see it in their stores, they see it in their networks, they see it. Understand that we're working very closely, uh, obviously, with all of the key buying groups, both in Germany and also around the world. And we have specifically put a place a project that I've got a team working on exclusively to incentivize and attract re retailers to come to the show. We called it the retailer is king because you know, that is literally how we feel about it. Uh, and um, we're gonna, uh, the bullet points there show you some of the things we're putting in place such that when the retailers come to the show, they have a fantastic experience. We really facilitate them getting the most out of EFA, which we know is a huge big show and it's very easy to kind of get lost uh, and be a little bit you know, overwhelmed by it, it would certainly be possible. So that we're going to have um, privileged um, badge pickups, fast lanes, guided tours, specific breakfast, curated shows, talks, private lunches, shuttle services, etc. There's a whole list, and we're, we're working with um, all of the meet, all of the um, buying groups to make sure that as many retailers come and take advantage of that of that project. Uh, and then I don't know if it's possible to put the whole ecosystem on one slide. We've tried to there. Not a lot to say there, apart from. Uh, Hopefully we're talking to everybody. And now I want to spend a little bit of time, that was sort of marketing and the data aspects, if you like, um, a little bit of time on some of the new features that you might see in the content world, um, both in terms of a program, listening to people talk, but also experiences and features that um, every every person that comes to the Mesa Berlin at that time can, can uh, experience and hopefully have fun with. So um, there are a number of uh, ways that we're going to manifest this, and then those are the bottom uh, bullet points there. Um, and 
this is really kind of about signposting topics that uh, IFA wants to and, and we want to uh, really be in a place to talk credibly about in the future, such as gaming, such as sustainability, such as AI. Um, and so you'll see there, I'll talk a little bit more about the IFA Leaders Summit. This is a two day content program, which the team is putting together a fantastic um, mix and array of speakers who kind of come and talk about many different topics. Um, and we have, you know, um, from very kind of serious professors to young gaming kids with uh, lots of YouTube followers, that sort of thing. There's going to be a physical gaming arena, which will hopefully be very attractive for consumers. Uh, sustainability village. I mean, village is probably underselling it. It's a big, big zone now. Aoife, that's going to be very attract has proved very attractive with literally almost all customers we've talked to. House of Robots slash uh, smart home of the future and the role that robots will play. Digital content, which we talked about earlier, but on the website, but also throughout the show, we'll be posting and producing a lot of digital content, um, uh, both on the website and also on our various different channels. And then Ethernet, which will I've got a couple of sites specifically for. And the main thing there is really expanding our innovation and startup zone, and then our you know highlighting our kind of ambition for that in the future. So uh, in terms of the leader summit, as I said, a, a, a quite a high level program, um, really attracting some of the most influential speakers I would say in the world. Uh, on all sorts of topics from the future of start homes, like I said, to IoT, to AI, uh, to robotics and, and uh, gaming and so on. So um, look out for that and try to try to get into some of, as many of those sessions as you can. And please, um, again, help us highlight uh, and um, talk about some of the people, who, amazing people we've got speaking. The themes obviously are going to be the mega trends that are happening uh, in our in our industries. And obviously, as you might expect, a lot of focus on sustainability, well-being, health, and so on and so forth. No doubt, and there's no escaping uh, AI. I'm sure you've all heard of and uh, maybe have even written about ChatGPT and others. Uh, that's clearly going to be one of our uh, major topics. We've got two or three fantastic speakers talking both about the pros and cons. We know that there are you know, lots of... Um, People are quite sceptical about AI from very famous people are quite sceptical about the power of the power for AI to do good, let's say. Um, and a lot of that, um, a lot of that discussion will be had on stage and, and hopefully in other uh, panels uh, during the show. Um, and another, you know, kind of quite interesting and, and if you like controversial topic is the production of um, chips and semiconductors, all sorts of geopolitical considerations there. All those, again, uh, pros and cons and, and, and how that uh, race is being played out will all be discussed again in the programme. And here's now a selection of a few of those speakers. So the chap on the left is um, one of the young gamers I was talking about. Um, he calls himself Quebblecop, which I think means, literally means chatterbox for anybody that's kind of familiar with um, uh, with Dutch. His real name is obviously not that, it's Jordi van der Boucher. Uh, but he's one of these guys, he'll, he'll turn up in ripped jeans and uh, fuzzy hair all over the place. But he is genuinely uh, well versed in the future of the metaverse. He's got a huge following of people that uh, listen out to him, um, including uh, my 11 year old son and many of your children, no doubt. Uh, please go and tell them we've, we've got Quibblecop talking. Uh, and then, uh, you know, lots of other um, uh, speakers and they're all, all gamers. You can see Professor Chris Miller and then Dr. Tina Kluber. So a wide variety of people who are going to talk about some some pretty interesting uh, topics. And again, some more. We've got somebody very senior from Meta coming, Angie Gifford, and they obviously, um, you know, she's got the experience of Facebook, WhatsApp, Insta, et cetera, um, and somebody from the German Federal Agency for Disruptive Innovation. So. Uh, again, as you can see, a wide variety of speakers all talking on the on the lead leaders uh, stage. Um, and <laughs> sorry, just a bit of the uh, slides being around there. Sorry. Uh, and again, more more speakers here. Steve Collins. I don't know if people know. He's the chief technology officer of uh, King. And if you don't know King, King are the makers of Candy Crush, which is that phenomenally successful. Highly irritating uh, game that millions of people around the world uh, play on their phones. So um, great for us to get somebody like um, Steve Collins uh, come to talk, which is fantastic. Um, and we need to spend a bit of time talking about sustainability village. Now, 
this started off as a you know we, we obviously had to have the topic on the content program and i guess our team thought well this is going to be interesting um we'll put on a nice program literally we could probably have you know thrown Mila out and put this in hall 1.1 and this is uh, every single customer that we've talked to wants to be a part of the sustainability village. So it's grown into a large physical space. It will have its own content program and it's going to be sponsored by lots of different companies. And really, this is um, a reaction, I think, from us and also from the marketplace to, um, if you like, the evolution of what I would say that sustainability, even just a couple of years ago, probably was like, number three or four on the average consumer's parameters. Obviously, some people already thought it was hugely important. Now, almost all, all consumers you um, talk to, especially of those of the younger generation, sustainability and your message and story, if you like, around e-waste has got to be very convincing, has got to be genuine, and is probably number one, if not number one, then two, are uh, on um, in, in terms of consumers buying decisions and patterns. So um, I think a lot of our manufacturers are very aware of that. And a lot of them do have genuinely good stories to tell and, and, and want to um, and get this story out there about their their brand. Um, so please, um, you know, come and uh, have a look at this area. You won't be able to miss it, actually, frankly. Um, and and uh, hopefully it will make a very for a very good story. And I think this is something that will only grow as we as we go on. Um, and you can expect this to be a key part of uh, EFA as we move forward. Um, there's going to be um, a lot of talk about the legislation and regulation. Uh, we'll talk about e-waste. We're actually going to have a, a mend and repair shop on site as well, which will be um, great fun for, for people. Um, there's a little couple of graphics. We're working on the look and feel right now. Needless to say, it will be fully sustainable itself. Um, and um, yeah, the idea behind it is to kind of really get under the skin of and really understand customers and consumers increasing expectations of both us as a show, but obviously the brands and products they will see and um, want to buy at EFA. Here's a selection of some of the um, some of the speakers. So as I said, Sustainability Village will have its own content program. So there'll be the main stage, but there'll also be another stage within the Sustainability Village and have a wide variety of speakers. This is only a small selection here. How to Robots is also another uh, um, important part. Um, we've got some really uh, top level um, robotics uh, companies working with us uh, and really looking at the role of robots in you know, the smart home of the future and um, what we can expect uh, on that front. Again, both positive and negative um, uh, angles will be covered. One of the things we're doing is advisory boards. We're doing this in several different areas, a lot of, a lot of content, uh, and then one genuinely uh, just in the kind of leadership, if you like, of the show and providing us um, insights and input into development of the program, strategic direction of, you know, EFA. I've got a team of 35 people and, and we know that that's not enough. That's not enough brain power, right? So we're constantly looking to people within the industry, if you know of any industry figures you want to nominate, again, we would love to hear from them. You can see, again, two senior people there from Euronix, which backs up my point about, you know, working very closely with the buying groups. Um, and we reach out and liaise with these um, with these um, people on a on a regular basis um, to make sure that, you know, we don't miss anything. Uh, a little bit of time now on EFA Next, if you don't mind. So um, it's probably worthy of its own section. Um, and <clears throat> One of the things that I sort of noticed picked up on when I first came to the role, which is still only about four or five months ago now, is that, um, and especially when I went to see the, some of the competition, for me, my favourite parts, and those of you that might have been to CES and also to Mobile World Congress, I'll be interested in your points of view. My, from my feeling, the best parts of CES is in Eureka Park. When you go downstairs uh, into the, the, the basement, if you like, of one of the hotels, I think it's the Bellagio, that's when you really feel a lot of, noise and hubbub and you feel these young hungry people inventors who invented you know fantastic new tech and all of this is going around to see them you really feel like it's a really great vibrant trade show and the same when you go to um, mobile world congress it was a great trade show but for me the best part of it again was what they call four years from now um 4yfn um 
it's a it's a great startup um, uh, zone. And I learned or I, or I heard I was told that we uh, there are more European startups that go to Las Vegas than come to Berlin. And for me, that was you know that was that that hurt my brain, and I was quite upset about that. So we had 137 startups at um, Ethernet last year. Uh, I've given the team the target to have more than 500 this year. So you can just see our level of uh, ambition in terms of turning that conversation around and really trying to get that scale. And again, this is step one. You know, if we get to three or 400, I won't be upset. I'm not going to kill my team. But the point is, over now, over a period of time, we really want to shift the perception of people's minds that EFA is a place where you can come and see innovation, you can see new tech, you can see inventors, you can see technologists really trying to produce something you know, either fun or, you know, hopefully world changing ideas and startups and scale ups that can, you know, really go on to then be important companies. This is something that's not new to the history of EFA, but perhaps in the last few years, we maybe let slip a little bit. And the important part of this, of course, is that startups is only a third of the conversation. So we're working really hard with our corporate innovation labs of our big corporate clients that we know well to get them to come to the show and also with the VCs and investors. And we will again put again. Uh, attractive packages in to um, attract all of those all elements of that ecosystem to Ethernex. Okay. Uh, to do that, we've partnered with an international expert, which is a company called The Next Web. They're based in Amsterdam, and they are experts in uh, anything that's kind of cutting edge technology innovation. Um, we'll include the, the link to their website on this uh, when the email comes through, and they also have twenty five people who all they do all day is look for startups. So they will help us and bring startups to EFA next. Uh, and they're also going to put on a five day content program about startups, scale ups uh, and uh, other talks and that are useful um, for innovative companies that are looking to grow in the consumer electronics and, and appliances um, spaces. We're also partnering with, uh, for those of you who are German or, or who live in Berlin, uh, Berlin Startup Night. Uh, and they are an organization that obviously, as you know, is based in Berlin, or you can imagine from the title, they really have their finger on the pulse of the local ecosystem. Um, I think that's hugely important. As much as we want to internationalize uh, EFA, we really also want to really partner with local heroes. So people like Berlin Startup Night, uh, they already run a successful event. They've been fantastic and they're going to move their event to run at the same time as EFA. Uh, and they're also going to bring uh, German and Berlin based startups to EFA next. Um, and uh, then we will then host a sort of competition or awards night at the Berlin Startup Night at the Deutsche Telekom uh, offices. So a nice combination, I think, there between an international um, expert and also local uh, organization. We're already looking forward to that. And uh, as I say, we'll send the links to both of those uh, websites in, in the email. You can check them out. One of the things you may have heard me talk about um, before, I've been talking about this for a while, I put it on the back of my business cards and the kind of uh, aspiration really, was to try to create a festival a little bit along the lines of South by Southwest or those of you who know London Tech Week, to really build upon the EFA brand so that when you have that first week of uh, September in Berlin, it really feels like that there is a tech community, a global tech community that's that's meeting uh, and participating in in the uh, you know, a whole program of events. A lot of these obviously will not necessarily be at the Messe Berlin. They might be in the evenings, might be away from Messe Berlin, although some of the stuff is happening on the showgrounds. So that we get that feeling that in the evenings, you're not, you don't just lose people to Berlin. Of course, you'll be able to escape. We're not trying to keep people hostage. But the idea is to <laughs> put on a program so that slowly over a period of time, and again, these things will develop if they, you know, if they have, have the right momentum over a period of time and maybe Berlin Tech Week, the idea is to create a legacy that in maybe 10 years time, we have something that's the size of London Tech Week or, or the South by Southwest Festival. So um, it's worth us um, spending a bit of time talking about that. Um, and it will de help develop the EFA brand to be associated with these things. So some of the things will not look um, very much like, you know, exhibition um, things. So we might have some drinks at Soho House. There's going to be a gaming festival at level. Again, I don't know if any of you, if those of you that know Berlin will know LVL level uh, and other, other things are happening. The program is in progress at the moment, but I think there'll be a lot of things to do if you want to stay in the EFA zone, if you like, or mindset during the first week in Berlin uh, in the evenings.
Now, uh, something else, but that's kind of related to this uh, development of EFA, and we're talking a little bit about, you know, sort of different stuff is some of you may have noticed that we've recruited Cornelia Schwaber, Connie uh, from Electronic Arts. So we're very happy about this and really happy that Connie has joined. Obviously, Electronic Arts, uh, for anybody who doesn't know, is a very large, successful um, games publisher. Uh, and clearly gaming is an area that we want um, EFA to be taken uh, much more seriously. And again, it's a hugely competitive landscape, but honestly, we, we can't have a consumer electronic show if we if we haven't got something to say about gaming. So clearly over a period of time, again, as I keep saying, evolution or revolution, Connie will start to give us that credibility and open up those conversations uh, in gaming, but not also gaming, other areas like AI, e-mobility, the metaverse, et cetera. Um, so it's a good strategic recruit from our point of view, and we're really happy to have Connie. Um, I think there's been some material that's been sent out, but if you want a specific press release about Connie, we have that uh, for you as well, if you want to run that. Other things on the visibility of the brand, we're working very hard um, and closely with the city, with the city of Berlin, both Visit Berlin and also Berlin Partners. That opens up to us um, a huge amount of networking and branding opportunities. Um, as you can see there, we've, we've got the we've got the official uh, logo um, press that we now put on all our materials and emails and so on. Um, and some physical, practical things you'll notice that when you land in the city, for example, that those of you that come in via um, train or in plane, there's the new luggage hall at the um, where you pick up your luggage when you arrive at the at the new airport. Outside, there's a tourist office, and that will be all red with the EFA logo, and where you can pick up your um, lanyard with your with your pass to come into EFA and similarly um, similar kind of activations at various places and other iconic relations around the city. Um, the mayor's office also runs an Asia Berlin summit uh, and we're going to have a role there and that will um, obviously uh, give us um, give EFA the brand some amplitude in uh, in Asia and also probably hopefully attract some Asian startups to come to uh, EFA next. Similarly, London Tech Week, we're going to be a, we're sending a delegation to London Tech Week again. Uh, so we then get that visibility on that Tech Week um, program and platform. And hopefully we attract some more visitors and maybe customers to come to uh, Berlin. So just a few things we're doing to try to elevate the visibility of the, the brand. The Roots of Berlin, we show, I showed this last time when we had a, a press get together. If anybody knows, it's effectively a um, series of interventions, press conferences, meetings, um, me and my team going and speaking at other events, uh, just a, a, a series of join the dots, if you like, between what was January when we started uh, in Las Vegas, leading up until um, uh, just before the show in the summer. Uh, and you'll see there the IMB, again, which I know a lot of you have asked about, is 5th and 6th of July uh, in um, at the Berlin Convention Centre. In fact, I think that is the next slide. Yes, so there we go, 5th and 6th um, July, Berlin. Um, for those of you who need to put in your calendars, Berlin Convention Centre. Um, oh, sorry, yes, important point there. We will be streaming those, those who can't attend in person. Um, we'll be streaming this uh, on our channels, I think, on probably on the YouTube channel. Um, so uh, obviously we will be holding uh, sessions live face to face in German and in English. But obviously, if you're uh, traveling from much further overseas, we'll be doing this also online. OK, that is really the end of my um, the sort of facts and figures parts of my presentation, if you like. How are we doing on time? Not bad. So I'm just going to spend a couple of minutes now. We're sort of having a quick look forward. I think most of you kind of agree with my sentiments here, but again, these could be topics of conversation or or articles um, if we want to, you know, kind of expand on any of these. Uh, I don't think anyone would be surprised with me saying that uh, the world has changed, obviously, with what happened in the last few years. And this probably really is the first time when face to face is really coming back in a big way. Um, a lot of our customers, though, actually had record years in during the pandemic. Um, and, you know, consumers found a way to get the products they want without going to shops and without going to trade shows. So uh, we need to be cognizant of that. That's not to say that face to face is dead. On the contrary, the demand for face to face is absolutely huge. What we're saying is people now are expecting much more from an event than only a trade show. 
And so whilst I can quite confidently say that EFA is the best trade show for consumer electronics and home appliances in the world, we all know that's not enough. So therefore, what else uh, are we doing in that regard? So in that regard, we have we happen to have a fantastic gift that's la landed in our lap. EFA is the longest running trade show that I know about. I once worked one in the UK called Spring Fair that was 75 years, but 100 years is almost unknown in this industry. And especially in uh, 100 years in you know pretty much one location uh, and with the history that EFA has got, we are you know doing as much as we can for 2023. But I think there's a little bit of a signpost that we're, we're actually keeping a few things back to make sure that 2024 EFA is absolutely enormous, both in terms of the show but all the noise we make about it and uh, some of the signposts that I was mentioning earlier. Yeah. And I think we can probably end on this, which is there's no doubt that what's probably most important, especially for a show for EFA like EFA, where um, you know, the importance of what the consumer is doing and how consumer patterns are changing. And if people, if consumers are finding other ways to get hold of the products they want, what is the millennials? What are the millennials thinking? What is Gen Z thinking? And there's now apparently a new gen called Gen Alpha, which is my son who's 11. And if, if you don't know about that, I'm sure a lot of you already do and you're already writing about it. Check out Gen Alpha because these guys are going to be consumers with wallets in a few years time. And they are going to again be doing things differently and have different patterns of interacting with our brands. Uh, that we represent and with themselves and, and the way they want to buy and consume content and so on and so forth. And I mentioned the content word there because I think that's important also to note. And if there's a trend that's also going on in the background is that there's a real shift from hardware to content. You know, <clears throat> I'm an Apple guy. And for some reason, a few years ago, I took the decision to go with Apple phones. And you probably couldn't pay me to take a Samsung phone now. It's terrible that say I have said that in front of people from Samsung. They understand. The one way I probably would change that decision is if <clears throat> there was content that was going to be on a Samsung phone that I couldn't get an Apple phone. You know, I chose Apple probably because it looked pretty and, you know, <clears throat> had some nice associations through the hardware. And I think that if you look now more and more, the way and where consumers are going to interact with content and consume content in the car, you know, maybe that's one of the reasons why CES are majoring so much more on the car. Where consumers aren't going to be driving or different ways you know and thinking about netflix and amazon and other people as consumer electronics companies then i think that's a quite an interesting trend that we all need to kind of keep up with and be aware of which i'm sure i'm preaching to the converters there with all of you being in your excuse me in your positions that's all i've got to say i just wanted to then reiterate and show you um contact details there I genuinely, I can't repeat this enough. Please feel free to get in contact. You'll have all of our phone numbers, uh, emails. Just, uh, you know, go ahead. It's a genuinely open door. Um, if you're shy to con contact with me, my assistant is there. And then, then there's um, several members of my team. Please, um, genuinely, uh, let's have an open two-way conversation if you ever need any materials or quotes or, uh, you know, other insights. So please reach out. And thank you from me. Um, I've seen a few messages been going to the chat now. We have got uh, a few minutes to go through some. Nadia, have you got the chat open? Uh, or shall I go? No, through? that was all just about the, the slides. Was it about the technical? Oh, here's a question that's uh, gone through. Question on the moment. Here we go. Oh, we've got a couple. Shall I just go through the chat? Yeah, then? Okay. Excuse me, guys. I'm just going to try and look through the chat while we're uh, as well as uh, looking through here. As much as well. no, so that was that session four. There you can read. Yes, yeah, here we go. The last row. Question, uh, the 500 plus startups, where will they all come from? Are the 500 startups? So if I get your name wrong, please apologize. Big here, a bang. OK, uh, are all the 500 startups expected already fully recruited? Right, so sort of three or four questions in one then. Um, so where will they all come from? Uh, the ambition is to have them internationally. For sure, we want a lot from the Berlin uh, Brandenburg area and from Germany. Um, but we we're also going to attract them also from Europe. One of the reasons why we um, teamed up with TNW. Uh, no, fully recruited? No, absolutely not. No, no, no. We this will take time. Um, I haven't got an exact figure at the moment, but I know it's already in the in more than what we had last year. Let me say that at least. 
Um, but no, this will this will take time. Smaller companies generally tend to need, um, you know, uh, have have shorter planning timescales, and we are um, completely set up to manage with very small startups, and we're you know obviously pricing it um, with that in mind. So we will be recruiting startups up until you know just a few weeks before the show. Uh, Humberto, um, can we advance some names on the exhibitor side? You can. I probably won't mention any specifics now, but there are um, not um, there are none of the big names that you would expect to see that that uh, are already there. I've sorry. I mean, beyond startups, what about the big companies? Yes, I've told at least a few companies that we used to have are already booked to these dates. Haven't confirmed yet. Um, there are, you know, um, we are. Probably relatively relative to a couple of the uh, what you might consult a normal planning cycle slightly behind, but that's just because we had to set up a completely new company and work with uh, uh, completely new data and all these customers. But um, no, all of the big companies that you would hope to see and expect there will be there. And that's it for all the ones in the chat at the moment. We have got a few minutes if anybody wants to put their hand up and chat and just ask me any questions. See, Tony's got one there. Can we unmute people or can do you want to type in the chat, Tony? I can unmute myself. I have the power. You got the um, power. Go, ahead, Tony. So I wanted to ask um, two quick questions. First one is if there's a buying group in the United States that I want you guys to work with, who is okay, the best great. person to contact? Beg your pardon? Who's the best person? If, who's uh, the best myself? person to contact? For yes, a myself group? and Shelley. Okay. And then my second question is, in terms of the retailer um, uh, programming that you're doing, and you mentioned Gen Alpha, it's the yep. first generation that has grown just knowing screens. So their Correct. consumer experience is totally different than what we're used to. Yep. Are you doing any content around that at the show? Yeah, we, I mean, you're making me feel very old there, Tony. I still talk about Gen X. I'm older than generation, you. I'm Gen which, X. I'm Gen X. Yeah. You know, <laughs> That didn't, <laughs> that didn't have screens and then screens somehow came along. Yes, we are very cognizant of that. And so I think, you know, in the gaming arena and in some of the speakers that we'll have, we're trying to get them in uh, potentially arrange some smaller sessions so we don't have, you know, kids having to go into like the, you know, the big auditoriums, but smaller sessions to have like people like Quebble Cop, you know, talk to them mm -hmm. about it. Um, you know, um, my son who's 11, you know, can't believe that we've got Quebble Cop, so he's, you know, loving to come and engage with that content so i think there is still the ability to engage with that um gen on a face-to-face -face basis but of course yeah we will have opportunities where they can just come and sit in front of screens and do their thing as well <laughs> and then my last question is i know that cs does this really well they partner with all of these like country startup you know like french and all of these like yes. pavilions yep. um i know there is one in the us I'm trying to get a hold of whoever that person is that's in charge yeah. of it. It's very small compared to some of the other countries. Okay. Um, but that's where how they get a lot of those humongous startup companies. Yeah, we're, we're, we're investing a lot in that. If you have any success in that regard with one of the years, please introduce us. We've already developed some good relationships with um, uh, Business France and others. And um, that's probably where we'll The, the country um, investment funds and pavilions. So, uh, absolutely agreed. There's a couple more in the chat. Bear with me. So, Reiner, is there any change of the uh, the ARD to decision to stay away from EFA? Not as far as I know, but we will. Um, you know, we're investing a lot in um, all the different types of media and, and providers. Will the sustainable village be a concept open to exhibitors from the services and repetitive? Yes, absolutely, Eric. Um, I'm assuming maybe you have one or two people in mind. If you do, please um, guide them our way. Um, we want the sustainability village to be, um, you know, open to all. And so, yes, absolutely, we want people from services and repair sector. They can sponsor, they can speak, they can exhibit. So, thank you, Eric, for that question. Uh, any other questions? Got a couple more minutes. If you think of a question afterwards, you didn't get a chance to now today. Um, please uh, just, as I said, feel free to, to drop us a line, uh, email, WhatsApp, whatever you whatever you want to do. I've just seen one come in, no one from Humberto. Will it keep being mainly for trades? Um, I mean, 
Depends what you mean by mainly. We, we are very, very focused on the consumer. Clearly, it's a trade show, right? So, um, you know, we 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 want to do both. And my ambition for Eva is to be the best of the best, right? And the best of all worlds. So I want the best trade show where all the buying groups come and the retailers come and it's clearly a business show, right? But at the end of the day, those buying groups and those retailers come are coming because they want to sell to the consumer. So we have to do both. So I'm going to have fantastic consumer facing content, fantastic consumer facing experiences, and we're doing our utmost to attract international visitors and consumers from Asia, from the US, from all over the world to Berlin, and then once in Berlin, to the show. Yeah. Good. Any last questions at all? Great, guys. Well, look, um, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate you. Um, taking the time out of obviously very busy, busy schedules to listen to me uh, talking. I really want to have a, a genuine two way street conversation, so I look forward to hearing it from many of you as possible. And again, we will repeat these sessions. Hopefully see you in July at the IMB uh, and then I, I will hopefully have another touch base again before the show. And then again, we will start, um, you know, after the show, I'm sure we will get together again um, before Christmas. So. Take care. Thanks ever so much. And um, let's speak soon. All right. Thank you. Bye bye.